Hey, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. We're here live in Las Vegas for an in-person event. Of course, it's a hybrid event, virtual online, many people online, a lot of people here on the event, a lot of action, uh, cloud going next generation, mainframe transformation, more analytics, more chips, everything's faster and cheaper and getting better and better in the cloud. We got great coverage, we got two great guests here. We got Justin Hooper, Vice President of Global Operations Infrastructure, Ingram Micro, and JP Perot, EVP of Telecom Media and Technologies and AWS Executive Sponsor for ATOS. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me on theCUBE. Thank, thank you, glad to be here. So what do you think about the conference so far? Pretty good? Like a lot of a lot of people here. Super exciting. 27,000 people yeah. showing it's up. It's amazing. Re real people, yeah. not yeah, workers. I, it feels almost <laughs> normal. Yeah, I can't believe the turnout. Got a great topic, you guys working together. We got mainframe, you got analytics, transformation. Let's get into it. Let's start by introducing what you guys do, your company, and, and why you're here. JP, yeah. we'll start with you. I can start, okay. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm living you know, in Atos, uh, uh, all the uh, cloud business and telecom media technology. Atos is a big company, it's a service and technology company, 11 billion euro business. And we are leading uh, all the transformation to cloud and also all what is related to hybrid cloud transformation, also with security. We are number two in the world in terms of security and cyber security. We have developed also a long lasting relationship with AWS. We have been an advanced technology partner of AWS for now many years, since uh, 2013. And we have developed a specific program, you know, regarding mainframe transformation and migration. So this is why we are super excited to be here with you, Justin, today. Thank you, by the way, uh, having uh, Ingram Micro with us. Justin. I appreciate it. It's good talking to you. Good to be here. And I'm Justin Hooper. I work for uh, Ingram Micro. I run their global infrastructure and IT operations. Ingram Micro is one of the world's uh, largest technology suppliers, technology, technology solutions, and uh, cloud platform and services. Well, great for the intro. Thanks for that setup. A lot of action going on. You guys are recently um, purchased. You guys got transformation in the cloud. What is the movement to the cloud? Take us through the current situation. Yeah, we see, uh, we see a big acceleration, and especially due to COVID, COVID situation, we have seen an acceleration of transformation to cloud. There is still a lot to do, a lot to do, because there are many uh, business critical applications which have not been transformed. And also, especially all the applications which are sitting on top of mainframe. That's why exactly the discussion we have with Ingram at the moment is, how we can help Ingram with some of the applications they have on mainframe to transform and, and design the future. Justin, take us through the transformation that they're helping you with. What's the key challenge? What problem are they solving? Take us through the, the specifics. Yeah, it's interesting because um, I'm actually a, a, a lover of the mainframe. I think most of the people at AWS would think, uh, the mainframes, didn't they put the, the rockets on the moon? That's old technology, but mainframes are still fantastic platforms. Um, uh, we, we have great success, great resiliency. Uh, with ATOS, we are on the most modern chips, but um, there are a lot of restrictions. Uh, you know, you really, have to size your mainframe for your peak workloads. You don't have the ability to uh, separate, segment, scale horizontally. Uh, and then there are really nuanced, like, um, it's hard to get resources that know mainframes. To be honest with you, it is just, there's a people issue there industry-wide, um, and, and we're not different than any other company and compete for resources, um, both on the system side and on the programming side. And we really want to look at, at how we can make a massive leap if we're going to leave the mainframe, how do we start a journey where we can end up really being able to take advantage of horizontal scalability, the ability to um, have a utility compute model where we're really paying as we go, uh, because that is the opposite how the mainframe model works today. Talk about the refactoring, because I know I've covered a lot of uh, mainframe stuff with IBM in the past, and how banks are still using it, everyone, they're real applications, they're mission critical. How are they integrating into the, into the digital transformation? Containers, Kubernetes are hot right now, you're starting to see a lot more integration. How do your customers, and how do you guys see refactoring happening? I can see the integration, but how does the refactoring there's, come in? There's really, uh, what we've learned with, with our partnership is, there are really a couple of ways to, to do the refactoring. You can convert your old COBOL code to something else like Java, and there are tools and companies out there that do that. Um, or you can really build a plan where you can effectively emulate uh, your mainframe on commodity computing. And uh, through a, a relatively deep analysis with ATOS, the recommendation that we're looking at is that ability to first get off of the hardware, um, get off of that reliance on the platform, but not jump all the way to 
modifying your code to Java. There's not a lot of value in going from COBOL to Java, for example, if you're not making improvements in your programs, adding business capabilities. So the journey starts with get off the hardware, but then it allows you to go and say, uh, we're going to break up those complex programs, we're going to separate the data differently, and once you do that, you can start to take advantage of containers and start to separate yourself even more and really get into the cloud. But, but there, there are ways to, to piece your way through that. You know, that's really good insight. JP, I'd love to get your reaction on this too because what Justin's getting at is what we hear a lot from uh, experienced CIOs of large companies that have a lot of existing stuff. And the, and the theme is, and the word they use is, you don't want to touch the white hot core. Meaning, it's so mission critical that if you mangle it too hard, touch it too hard, a lot of bad things happen. So this idea of push things out to the cloud that are around the edges and then work your way slowly in is a, is a risk management and practical approach. No, exactly, you said it right, it's exactly risk management. So, uh, and Justin explained it, uh, there are different factors which come to the end point in terms of decision. There is one, one issue regarding uh, competencies because there is a lack of competency in the market. There is what kind of uh, business critical apps you have. Uh, there is a transformation as such, you know, as uh, Justin explained, you can record or, or, or you, can, you can move you know, to a different platform. So each time it's a program, it's a program and analysis that yeah. we do with our customer, advising the customer about, hey, based on your, your critical application, what is the right journey, what is the right transformation to do the right risk management. Justin, your take on the hot core, I saw you nodding your head, you're like, yeah, what's your take on that? Well, yeah, I agree with you, and, and that fear, uncertainty, and doubt, it, it's kept people on the mainframe for a really long time. Um, the technology is caught up, and the expertise where, uh, just as JP said, you've got to be really careful in the way you plan it, and you've got to make sure that you can always get back, and so the approach that we're looking at taking is, is uh, you're able to accommodate more risk if there's an easy rollback plan, and some of the new, new technologies and processes are going to allow that, so, um, you know, if I screw this up, I get to go find a job someplace else, so <laughs> I'm aware of the white hot core, but I, yeah. I'm confident it can be done. Yeah, and then technology, you don't have to kill the old to bring in the new, you can do both, and I like your approach, I think that's a success path Absolutely. that people are talking about, it's well documented. Um, but at the end of the day, we're back in distributed computing. I mean, mm -hmm. I want to get to this in, at the end, but I want to give you guys some time to think about it. As cloud becomes everywhere, as Adam Stileski talks about, it's not just about mainframes, this, it's a distributed computing paradigm. So we're going to come back to that, but let's get into the SAP Redshift, because I think that's something that you guys are working on. I think that's worth uh, calling out here. Analytics is huge. Tell us what's going on there, how you guys are working together on that. Yeah, so we, we have designed um, a high level of competency around SAP, and especially the migration and SAP Redshift. So we, uh, we have designed this program also with AWS. Uh, and this is something we are discussing at the moment also with, uh, with Ingram. So we see an acceleration of, um, of this trajectory. It has been also highly pushed by SAP as well. You know, so we are one of the strong, strong partners of SAP and we see many many customers engage into this transformation at the moment. Yeah. The cloud really gives you a lot of advantages when you're doing migration, especially around uh, pre-existing software like SAP, it's pretty right. big, complex, yeah. Yeah. mission critical, so you can throw compute at it, a lot of cool uh, capabilities. Yeah, that's true, but <laughs> you, you, need, you still need to configure a lot of things as well, because it's, uh, you need to customize, and you need to really fine tune, you know, what is, it, what is it going to be available to the customer needs and to what you need in our company as well. I and mean, this gets back to what Justin was saying about emulation. I mean, I can run SAP <laughs> on Amazon. I mean, we talked about, I wrote, I wrote this story about, I wrote a story about this prior to the event called Super Clouds. You can build these super applications that combine things that you never would have thought was possible. SAP running on Amazon or porting on the Redshift when you need it. So you have a lot more flexibility. This is now the new normal. Sorry, sorry. Justin, maybe you want also to comment well, on that. Yeah. You know, uh, the great thing about being on Redshift is we picked that as a platform for our data warehouse a number of years ago, and there were basically analytics capabilities, but what we're seeing a lot here at reInvent is, is Amazon is catching up with their out-of-the-box ML and AI capabilities in Redshift. So it, it feels good that we picked a platform that they're growing the capabilities in right as we're advancing out of more of the traditional analytics and trying to go to that machine learning. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the things that we've been working with ATOS on is, is migrating off of SAP BW and saying maybe we don't need that as a, as a data and reporting platform if we're solid with Redshift, and we certainly don't need both. So we're working with them to look at the, the case to move all the way to Redshift, and then we can run our analytics and, and, and build ML in that. And, and you know, that was a big theme in the keynote, this purpose-built capabilities. It's almost like having, you know, if you're building a building, you got iron, steel, girders, 
made for you, got this now better value in the platform to build on. This brings up the, the uh, notion of distributed computing. Yeah. In a way, there's the same game, different generation. I mean, isn't it? You got to integrate, there's still transformation, there's inflection points, this is current. I feel like this now more than ever is a time where you can actually roll it all together with a little help from your friends or if Amazon's got something you don't want to reinvent the wheel. What's your reaction to that? Because we've seen the movie before when it's hard, now it seems easier. Yeah, Maybe but it's we, not. We, see, uh, we see three layers uh, coexisting in more and more. We see that the uh, application on data will be spread over three dimensions. There will be edge computing, there will be uh, private cloud, and there will be public cloud. And uh, we see more and more pressure in this direction that many customers are saying, hey, where should I put my data? Uh, this, this part will go uh, and be processed at the edge, this part will be processed in the public cloud. It is also one of the capability we have in Atos. We are able to advise customers about what is the best way to process your data. If you have a lot of latency, you can process at the edge. You know, there is uh, less requirement you can process in the public cloud. So we see this coexistence of model. You know. Justin, what's your take on this uh, distributed computing throwback concept? Because look at the rise of companies like Snowflake. Where'd they come from? They're on Amazon. <laughs> they picked the cloud, now they're on going to other clouds. You can build a super cloud. You can actually build this out now faster. What's your take? Yeah, I got, my take is that it's a pendulum and it, and it swings back and forth and like you said, there was client server and then everything was web-based and, and, and a lot of things look a lot like the mainframe. Put everything in the cloud and then attach to it and then all of a sudden, you know what, we need edge computing. Pull some stuff back out of the cloud and put it where we need it. So, so it's going to continue to evolve. What, what I have noticed um, that I like more is, is the major home one swings and, and statements like I want to get out of the data center business and go to the cloud. I hear those less and people are realizing there's, there's hybrid, there's purpose-built computing like you said, and we need to make sure that we're putting our data where it needs to be, putting our compute where it needs to be, and that's going to change on our customer base and evolving technologies. 5G yeah. is changing the whole world around edge computing, so, so uh, I, I'm enjoying the ride. I, I, yeah. I'm glad I'm in technology because I get to move with the ebbs and flows, but um, I don't think we're ever going to land. I think it's going to keep yeah, going. Yeah, that, that's a totally fair point where it's fun uh, as a technologist, but you're right. If you're operating a cl with cloud, it doesn't matter if you're on-premises or edge or public cloud, it's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just pick your, pick your use case. Right, your I use want case low latency exactly. at the edge, I'm not going to yeah. move my data and send it to cloud, of course you're going to leave it there. Yep. Now if you're on-premise- We've already moved workloads back and forth and a lot of companies are doing that yeah. too. Yeah. You know? I think that's what they're getting at when they talk about cloud everywhere. I think that's I, their so way of saying, okay, hybrid's real. Yeah. Uh, they won't ever say multi-cloud though. <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> we'll hear that here. <laughs> All right, quick summary. What are you guys doing? What's the future hold for the relationship? You guys got a good thing going on. Take us through what's the future look like. Yeah, for me, it's, uh, it's a big thank you for uh, the partnership with Ingram. So uh, we are extremely uh, uh, excited by uh, what we can do for you and in terms of advising your transformation. And you know, I hope that you get uh, the right service and, and the right advice you know, from, from Atos. Yeah, it, it's been great. We, uh, We've appreciated, we've been, we started as a mainframe customer and now they're helping to advise on how we could get off the mainframe. I mean, really cannibalizing one of the other areas there um, in the spirit of evolving and partnership and you guys are bringing a ton of expertise in the way you guys attack the account uh, and we centralize through our account team is, is very helpful. You're very aware of what's going on on all sides of the business. Well, congratulations, that's a big part of the theme and the keynote today on, on Adam about mainframe transformation. But at the end of the day, it's about modern infrastructure, modern application development. Absolutely. Getting out and having set the table for the next generation. Yeah. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. You guys want to get a quick plug in real quick for the company? Talk about uh, Atos and Ingram. Give a quick plug for what you guys are working on. Sorry, Give good. a quick plug about what you're working on. Give a quick commercial, one minute about the Oh, company. one minute, yeah. No, at us we are, uh, we are really uh, transforming and leading uh, the industry in terms of secure uh, transformation to cloud. Security will be more and more important as data is everything about where is the value. So we are really uh, making sure that our customers, they get to maximize, they can maximize the value around data, transformation to cloud in a secure way. Justin, JP, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate the insights. Don't touch the hot core, make, take your time. <laughs> Have a good time. You're watching theCUBE, the official broadcasting of AWS reInvent, leader in tech coverage, theCUBE. Thanks for watching.